Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader, quantum soul guidance practitioner, and certified Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, we will be opening into the frequencies and energies, the astrological and galactic energies that are coming through and building up to this Capricorn new moon on January 11th, 2024, which is revealing itself to be a very potent karmic choice point. Thank you so much for being here together with me today, inviting in the higher frequencies of 2024, opening this brand new year together. Before we dive into all of the information, and trust me, there's a lot. This is a dense presentation because this moon wants to share so much with us. I want to invite you to the upcoming Capricorn New Moon Distant Reiki Share on January 11th online. You can learn more and RSVP for free on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. No prior Reiki experience is required. You are welcome. The intention for this share is to come together in sacred circle, receive enlightened life force energy for healing, for empowerment. Lately, I usually throw in a little astrology because I can't help myself. And we use a Reiki journey to connect with the current cosmic energies in their most enlightened expression and share Reiki together to empower our intentions for the moon cycle ahead and our highest, most evolved individual and collective timelines moving forward. So I hope you'll join us this time. Okay, friends, welcome to the astrological chart of the Capricorn new moon. So in this video, I'm going to go over the astrology of the new moon. I'm also including some key dates, some transits that are leading up to the new moon on January 11th. We'll also talk about the Sabian symbol and the galactic chart of the new moon, as well as where is the new moon happening in the sky. We'll close out this presentation also with a galactic heritage card pool. So you'll want to stay until the end. Those of you who have been here before, you know what to expect. But for those of you who are new, welcome. I appreciate you being here. Welcome, soul family. Leading up to this new moon, I've included some key dates and key transits here. So the very last day of 2023, we have Jupiter Station Direct. And this is wonderful, especially if you're a Sag rising, you have Sagittarius placements. It's like our big, benefic blessings and good fortune planet, our expansion principle has come out of that retrograde and is a little bit more available to us in terms of our outward manifestations of that good fortune and expansion principle. It's good to expand inward, but inward, outward, it's good to expand outward too. So that's a great blessing. We also start 2024 with Mercury stationing direct. So it's coming out of its retrograde and it'll start moving forward into January. And this is really wonderful as well. Our communications will be smoother, easier. Some of those mistakes that might have been made or come into our awareness during Mercury retrograde can be cleaned up. Solution consciousness, inviting in that solution consciousness, greater mental clarity, a little bit more grace and ease with the tech things. I don't know about y'all, but this last Mercury retrograde was it was particularly amplified. So I think Mercury stationing direct and moving forward again will be a big blessing to start off 2024. We also open the year with Venus square, Saturn, 
Mars entering Capricorn. So this is a big shift from that Sagittarius expansion, very energized energy to one that's more practical and hard working. So we're seeing our value systems and our relationships really honing in and tuning in, looking at the long-term view and the long-term vision there with Saturn. With Mars entering Capricorn, this is wonderful for that hard work and integration and bringing all the pieces together in physical structure, material reality. Then on January 5th, we have the Sun square Chiron. So this could be a moment where healing is needed, healing is required. Changes in our thinking are necessary to incorporate and accommodate our new healed timeline that we're choosing in. You may also be guided to take certain actions that better accommodate your energy in this new healed timeline. You may be guided to be walking. If you're watching this video, you're on the new healed timeline. This is probably the timeline you're choosing here. We'll get more into this karmic choice point in just a moment. January 7th, Venus squares Lilith. So these are the two, two of our feminine aspects in conversation with one another. And perhaps again, challenging us into our next evolution of our divine feminine expression, challenging us in those sore spots that might have been repressed and suppressed and need us to hold some space, hold some gentle space for those deep feelings to be seen and expressed and felt and flowed through so that we are not festering in any kind of rage or lower vibrations there, or even festering kind of in that, that shadow world. If you're feeling like lost in the astral plane, you can like get back on focus, bring in the light and integrate, be held by that enlightened feminine consciousness as well. January 8th, Mercury square Neptune. This is a wonderful time for Reiki journeying and spiritual work and creative activities. It's not so good a time for very specific, fine details. <laughs> this would be more challenging, but for kind of dreaming into new possibilities, this can be very beautiful. And if you are navigating details, by all means, use your intuition. It might not be logic and reason and linearity you're relying on for decision making. Be It might be more of this right brain, trust and faith and intuition, more creative sense of knowing your clear senses. Sun trying Uranus on January 9th. So this is like your light bulb moments. This could be very electrical energy in your field. This can be great for galactic contact and having some brilliant new ideas and innovations and possibilities coming in and connecting for you and with you for your core energy and your expansion, your growth, your sense of possibilities. So this could be like the light bulb moment then followed by this Mars sextile Saturn on the ninth also like that you can then work with and put into form. This is also like electrical work. <laughs> electrical work, Mars, sextile, Saturn. Oh, it's finished, you know, in a very mundane sense, but whatever brilliant idea, there's a, there's a great aspect following that's like, okay, now let's, we can implement, we can do it. And this is all in very divine timing here, because on January 10th, we have the sun squaring the nodal axis and really this whole new moon. So on the 10th, it, it starts that exactitude. And in the new moon chart, you can see it here, the sun and moon together conjunct in Capricorn, making this square to the nodal axis, the north node of the moon in Aries, the south node of the moon in Libra. 
And when there are planets or points that are square the nodal axis, it's like time for us to integrate that energy and receive those messages and guidance, maybe make a, a change in our action, a change in our thinking, a shift in our consciousness that allows for our evolutionary process to unfold. So leading into this new moon, we're, we're feeling that tension. We're feeling that, okay, is there an action I need to take? Is there a whole shift in my consciousness that needs to take place? A shift in my consciousness that can happen at that inner level and then manifest outwardly in my my speech, what I'm saying, my communications, in my actions, in my behaviors, in my patterns, in my creations, in my relationships, and in, you know, specific areas of life. This will also be good to know where in your chart is this new moon happening so you could see, okay, this is this choice point is happening in this area of my life. But you would want to look to the specifics of your birth chart to know more about those life areas. So find that 20 degrees and 44 minutes in your chart and you'll know where this is happening for you and what it means. And if you'd like a reading to explore that too, you can connect with me or another astrologer help you dial into that. What's really nice also is that after this new moon, we get Mars trine Jupiter. So beginning on January 12th. So again, whatever new beginning, whatever new seed that's being planted at the time of this new moon, it's like you have that go, you have that action, Mars and Capricorn, let's make it happen, Jupiter bringing in lots of support, lots of earthly support, material support, and blessings to help you navigate those next steps and maybe first steps that feel like really tender and really vulnerable after this whole process leading up to this new moon. The end of 2023 was like a lot of completions and a lot really coming up, like clearing out so that I think preparing for 2024 as a new year, but also preparing for this, this big energy of Pluto in those last degrees of Capricorn before Pluto enters Aquarius January 19th of 2024. So there's been a lot that's coming together and I'm really seeing this this new moon as once again this karmic choice point. What is your path? What is your direction? Are you on track? Are you listening? Are you following the guidance? Are you following your inner truth? Are you following the directive of your authentic self? Are you following what those messages that have been coming in with increasing strength and probably you paying more and more attention to them since you started your spiritual awakening whenever that was and certainly in the years since 2020, have you been implementing what has come to light for you in terms of your soul growth, in terms of your inner truth, in terms of your inner authority, Saturn? So this Capricorn new moon is ruled by planet Saturn. And Saturn for me is the inner authority. It can be external authority and elders as well. But it's really that sense of I am, that leader, that presence, that knowingness. The truth is contained within me. The skills, the gifts and talents, the mastery is contained within me. Am I trusting that? Am I following that? Am I expressing that? Am I really putting all of my gravity and presence in that? not what the old external authorities are saying. External authorities, you know, are really easy to find in the outside world of people telling you what to do, or maybe even people you listened to in the past whose opinions you cared about in the past. This could also be bigger patriarchal conditioning and programming, 
you know, coming from family of origin, coming from childhood, coming from ancestral lineage, coming from past lives, looking at it from a more linear perspective, coming from lower timelines, coming from experiences on earth and other timelines, galactic soul experiences. And of course, there's support here to really transform all of that Pluto. This new moon is widely conjunct Pluto. So there is that, that essence too of there might be additional completions happening at the time of this Capricorn new moon to allow you to really walk through this karmic choice point to enter this portal that's opening. Because when we look at the galactic energies, you will see with me all of the strong portal energies that are available I'm seeing it as karmic, the sun and moon, semi-square, Saturn, trining Uranus too. There's so much galactic support here. There's community support. There's the timeline of the new earth. There's the timeline of your awakened soul consciousness of the new way forward, breaking free into liberation, spreading your wings, flying sextile also to Neptune. Again, any letting go process that needs to take place is supported. Spiritualization, spiritual practice, give it to God, give it to Reiki, give it to your higher power, give it to the earth, give it to the divine, whatever burdens you are no longer willing to carry. That support, that dissolution factor is there to be used for right use of dissolution doesn't have to mean like you know you're just losing things and it's sad when we consciously let go like that and give certain things there can be a grief process even though what we know for our highest good so also to hold space for that that can be one of the challenges here for a Saturn ruled like Capricorn lunar cycle is like, no, I'm just not going to feel my feelings. And it's like, no, you need to feel your feelings. You can be practical about them, but be also supported and embracing of those feelings, holding space for them. I've made a couple other videos on this topic lately. So you'll definitely want to check my channel out, Taylor Norris Reiki and tune into those. So we talked about it widely conjunct Pluto squaring the lunar nodes, meaning really that choice point is here. And also in square to Chiron. So choosing that healed timeline, it's a great time to receive Reiki, receive a healing session to do self healing with yourself, come to the distant Reiki share that's available to you but really to be accessing that empowered masculine sovereignty within yourself and that clear direction and that sense of pioneering into uncharted territory, going into the uncertainty, knowing you're guided, you're protected, and it is your path of destiny. It is your highest timeline here. This is the portal you're being invited to walk through and you already said yes so go ahead and walk through <laughs> go ahead this is a really interesting energy I'm excited to share with you about because I had this huge intuitive hit download last night before bed about a message I wanted to definitely share in this video and my next step was I want to look at the Sabian symbol for the new moon and then to see how much the guidance matched the symbol. So the symbol is for Capricorn 21, a relay race. The value of competition in developing group consciousness. And then the key words here, dynamic interchange. You can pause the video and read through it if you'd like. This is the interpretation by Dane Rudger coming from mindfire.ca. Great website and rabbit hole to check out all the Sabian symbols for all the degrees of the Zodiac. 
So my intuitive hit was to share about how this process I'm experiencing and my sense is probably many of you are starting to experience too, that this is a sneak peek of like the evolution, one of the meanings of Pluto entering Aquarius and the energies of 2024 and the new earth in heaven on earth is this ability to be shifting between a sovereign, individualized, seemingly separate consciousness and shifting also into that awareness of being part of a group consciousness as well, a collective consciousness as well. And this is an ability of the higher dimensional beings. Like this is a great sign. So if uh, what I'm saying, you're like, yeah, I'm noticing that too. I'm noticing that in my meditations, in my Reiki journey, shamanic journeys, in my work with my guides, that, you know, there's this real shift in this interchange where you're able to like pop in and be an individual. And then you're also able to like, fully be merged with your guides and with your group consciousness. Now here's the thing, <laughs> shadow warning. <laughs> the shadow sign warning of this is what consciousness stream are you tuning into on a group consciousness level? Is it programming? Is it fear conditioning? Is it, you know, the mainstream group consciousness? Is it the astral realm? Is it the second heaven? Is it lower dimensional beings? Is, you know, is it beings that still have a lot of ego and are working through polarity? Be aware of this because I think this ability is really flipped on. It's always been flipped on. And when it's consciously expressed, it can shift to at least what I'm choosing is I want to be able to individuate and experience myself as separate and sovereign and, you know, my individual self and then be shifting into the group consciousness, enlightened group consciousness, enlightened group consciousness, enlightened beings energies and beings at Reiki and light and life force energy is connecting me to and enlightened levels of consciousness, enlightened realms where there is no longer duality and polarity. I want to be tapping into that bigger perspective where it is rooted and anchored in love and there is no fear. That's my choice in my path. But what this is also manifesting as when I'm around people, <laughs> my guides, if my guides and somebody else's guides are not compatible, there's an issue. I'm going to feel it. And I'm not going to want to be around that person anymore. So it's very, very interesting too, depending on like navigating this, this change and this shift over, like the alternative being like, if my guides are very compatible with somebody else's guides, this is great. Or th there's a sense of working together more or uplifting or there's a healing transmission that's coming through so it's it's a very it's an interesting level of reality and perception and I think this is what many have talked about as we ascend this is what this is part of what that means is it's like this vacillation this oscillation between the individuated consciousness and the group consciousness and the question is which group consciousness? Is it fear-based mainstream physical consciousness that is then rooted in fear-based, um, you know, astral or non-physical consciousness? Or is the group consciousness that you're, you're also dancing in, is it in an enlightened group consciousness that is rooted and anchored in love and only love? So there are other options too between that. Let me know in the comments, is this making sense? Because this is really fresh and it's new and it's it's different to talk about this way. But I think this is a huge theme and learning and lesson 
that we are going to be receiving in 2024 in this whole Pluto and Aquarius transit. So I'm saying it now so I could be like, I said it in that Capricorn new moon video when people start talking about this more and more. I've said it now. It's recorded and yeah, it's on the record. <laughs> so this is one to watch. All right, about that too. So in the sky, this new moon is happening in the stars of Sagittarius constellation. In Western tropical zodiac signs, it's the sign of Capricorn, but actually in the sky, this is happening in the stars of Sagittarius constellation. The zodiac signs that we use in Western tropical astrology are not the same as the zodiac constellations. This can be confusing. So I hope this is clear where the new moon is actually happening is in the stars of Sagittarius. And you see the picture here of Sagittarius, the archer. The constellation Sagittarius is a different energy than the zodiac sign of Sagittarius. The constellation is more of this fierce centaur archer with some healing powers and abilities that kind of got lost in the myths over time. So I think if we can even tap into that more primordial essence of Sagittarius, more of that core frequency, there is a lot of spiritual energy and a lot of spiritual power contained within the Sagittarius constellation. There's even the stars in the head of Sagittarius are very prophetic. They're very intuitive. They're seeing, they're receiving messages in the dream time. They're receiving visions of the future. So there, there can be a sense of that. There can be a sense of creating greater stability and steadfastness on your path as well. Making changes as needed. Being true to your authentic path and being steady on that path but also if you're more along the lines of, I don't want to give up, you know, these certain things or these certain ways, that stubbornness, you know, releasing that stubbornness so you can be more fully aligned, you know, eyes on the prize, the head of Sagittarius, the, the sharpshooter stare, <laughs> you know, it's like that, that super focus on where you're headed to the center of the Milky Way galaxy and beyond through the portal so let's explore the portal now in this galactic chart of the new moon there are many portals you could say that all galactic alignments are portals so <laughs> but there's an enhanced concentration of portals in this galactic chart which is from galacticastrochart.com you can go there and create a free galactic chart like this for your birthday. And if you want help interpreting it, myself or one of the other certified practitioners would be more than happy to help you discern and start tapping into some of those meanings. So the portals of this chart, there are many, but the one that is kind of loudest one of the loudest ones is the fact the sun and the moon and capricorn are conjunct m57 lyra ring nebula oh my goodness and that is this <laughs> that is this beautiful portal flower essence of truth and purity and cosmic consciousness and all that is and clear seeing and clear new knowing and connecting through all the dimensions anytime anywhere any place any space all space all time all dimension right there and you see i've also got some pictures of lyra constellation here this is in the direction of Lyra constellation, this Lyra ring nebula. So Lyra, the vulture holding the lyre. And then you can see also the stars here, what they look like on their own. 
And so this is a very rich and ancient place of our galactic heritage, of our galactic origin, of the beginnings of humanoid consciousness and life forms within the Milky Way galaxy. And it all started here. So many souls coming through, consciousness streams coming through the galactic center. And also this Lyra ring nebula to start experiencing form and duality and polarity and separation and individualized consciousness. And what does it all mean? This is some of the earliest in a linear time perspective settlements of humanoid species. And this ring nebula being very sought after by all kinds of galactic star races and star beings. And in the galactic history and lore, there were said to be wars fought in this area of space over this portal that can go anywhere and everywhere. So there can be a lot of memories, ancient memories coming up from your soul and spirit experiences in the earliest bits of galactic history. And this can manifest in, in trauma reliving on a collective scale, but also on an individual scale as well. So the point being to center and anchor your consciousness in the present timeline. Understand there is this opportunity to make your way through this portal. Are you choosing the path of trauma or are you choosing the path of grace, the path of love, or are you choosing the path of trauma and fear and shrinking down, contracting and being small and letting doubt kind of rot you from the inside out? What are you choosing? If you're watching this video, I'm guessing you're choosing love, you're choosing healing, you're choosing to boldly let go of anything that is blocking you from the full embodied experience of your true self and your most loving self. And you're ready to go through this portal. You're ready for your next levels of enlightenment and nirvana and bliss and connection to all that is your enlightened guides, the enlightened realms, the enlightened levels of consciousness playing out within you harmonically in your thought forms, in your waveforms, in your communication, in your speech, body, speech, and mind, in your actions, in your behaviors, in your external material physical reality in your creations in your relationships in all of it you're ready for it you're longing for it and here it is <laughs> here it is so walk through step through invite in your enlightened guidance and soul and spirit aspects that are available to you to be connecting to you and supporting you as you make your transition into higher levels of embodied experience of this heaven on earth healed timeline your highest possible timeline of love of grace of light and we also have triple galactic cosmic super points here supporting us in this so we have the portal of lyra ring nebula we have mercury aligned with the galactic center the center of the milky way galaxy 
receiving divine intelligence, receiving the messages, the downloads, the uploads, the guidance, the thought forms, and also allowing you to shed out any of those thought forms or messages that need to be cleared away so that you have space for spaciousness. You have space for channeling your next step, channeling your guidance, channeling what needs to be said, channeling whatever you need from the online group consciousness you're now connecting to and will be connecting to. With Venus, we have a conjunction to the great attractor. So this is a couple octaves beyond the galactic center. After the galactic center, we go to the super galactic center, organizing 30 plus galaxies, including our Milky Way galaxy. And then that whole region, this super cluster, is part of what is being drawn back into but also was created by this great attractor this vast area of laniakea immense immeasurable heaven this vast part of the universe created by this great attractor so with venus there wow this is like attracting money consciousness and success consciousness and infinite abundance and your ideal galactic relations, your ideal higher guide relations. So you can be consciously choosing to connect with certain enlightened energies, certain enlightened guides, certain enlightened group consciousness. You can be powerfully attracting and magnetizing significant human soul connections as well. So this is exceedingly powerful. And these connections also helping you in very practical ways, protective ways. We see this Venus opposite Regal star at the foot of Orion, the protection of the Pharaoh. Is there a particular galactic or perhaps archangelic protector energy you want to call in and be supported by? I know I work with Archangel Michael a lot for this, but you may have other ideas and guides that are coming in and saying, Look, I offer protection. This is my gift to you if you want it. And they come when they're asked. Michael is here when I ask for him to be here. And he also can guide from afar at more of a distance when I need him a little bit further away too. So that's another way you can know if it's an enlightened guide, if they're really mindful of your free will and your invitation here. Jupiter opposite Shapley Attractor, our third galactic point involved in this new moon, highlighted here by Jupiter, just gone direct. So this is wonderful. We have even more galactic support. This is one step beyond Great Attractor, an even vaster part of the universe being created and being enveloped back into by this Shapley Attractor. So again, this infinite abundance, success consciousness, money consciousness, the relationships you need for your expansion, the experiences you need for your expansion, the soul growth you're looking to invite in, and any kind of shedding out. So these, all these galactic points can shed out the mental stories you don't need, shedding out the relationships you don't need, shedding out the belief systems you don't need, and then inviting in all of those thought forms, relationships, guides, teams, people, belief systems that are supporting you on your journey through the Lyra Ring Nebula into your healed timeline, your highest, most evolved timeline here and so this new moon also being ruled by planet saturn still making its beautiful conjunction with fomo halt star and piscis austrinus constellation watcher of 
the south connected to archangel gabriel this is a very tight conjunction here with bomohalt star one of our beautiful royal stars so this is divine intelligence divine messages this is inner authority your inner authority speaks your inner authority is ready to be heard your inner authority is ready to be expressed in expressing the beauty and the love of the Christ consciousness, higher frequencies of unity consciousness, unification consciousness, archangelic and enlightened galactic being support, enlightened guide, divine wisdom, divine intelligence support here. I'm feeling this Archangel Metatron energy coming through this too. And this might also be having to do with Saturn aligned with the Nebadish star in Cygnus, the swan, this Metatron, the soul records, the soul knowledge, the divine intelligence, infinite intelligence of what we need for new earth, what you need to be expressing new earth. How do we co-create heaven on earth? How do, how do we do that in the most optimized, idealized, practical, sovereign way possible? I think there can be a lot of downloads and a lot of bringing this into form at the time of this new moon and also throughout 2024 Neptune in relationship with Markov star and Pegasus so our enlightened unicorn energies are supporting us and the last alignment I want to talk about well I'll just mention Chiron with Alpharat star and Andromeda constellation this is like healing freedom healing liberation are you on a healing path of greater freedom and liberation and if not receive more support there do you need more support to support yourself on this path of healing and liberation you know how are you embodying this this new healed timeline this freedom timeline so this is a lot of what alpha Rots is talking about here in andromeda this star connected also to the pegasus constellation having to do with freedom and taking flight and spreading your wings. And so Pluto, this alignment is very exciting to see Pluto in the latter degrees of Capricorn conjunct a lad far star in Lyra constellation. You can see it's in these group of stars here. So Vega star is here. The ring nebula is kind of in this area. A Lathfar star is out here, and a Ladfar star is out there. And so Pluto also making this alignment with Lyra constellation. This is like really bringing in that galactic energy and frequency and soul memories and opportunities to release and clear and heal our traumas from those early Lyran wars, to move beyond them and to understand we can safely experience that liberation and freedom. We have the choice of the path of grace and the healed timeline as well to take. We can put down our weapons. We can put down our battle. We can choose love. We can choose enlightenment. We can choose enlightened group consciousness. We can choose enlightened expressions of this Aquarian energy. And it all begins with you and you choosing that in your moments of meditation and journeying and as much as you can in your daily life. So much abundance and joy and beauty is going to be streaming through that process. So know how very much you are supported in this process. The enlightened Lyra star beings are here, are supporting our consciousness evolution and paradigm shift at this time in this new moon and in 2024 and beyond. 
The final message I want to share about this new moon is the Galactic Heritage card by Lisa Royal Holt that I pulled asking for the highest guidance. What is the message to convey to you in this reading? And I got the card number 95, Way Showing. Sirius is the species or the star system. Future timelines, the most highly evolved enlightened era of Sirius star consciousness. Way Showing. You are a way shower. And the way you live the life is showing the way for others. So this is a card of leadership, leading by example, whether you're a public spiritual teacher, practitioner, healer or not, how you are showing up in your life, in your relationships, in your career, in your service, in your family, in your community, you are showing the way. You are being an authentic leader. And I think this is this is also that new moon squaring the nodal axis with the north node of the moon in Aries. So know this. You are a leader. You are a pioneer. You are a way shower. And to just keep walking forward in integrity, understanding the responsibility of showing the way understanding also the gift of showing the way being open to receiving that support as you show the way and that it is new paradigm and it is new territory and you are being called to step up but know that that is it is your time it is your time and you are enough and your leadership by example is a great gift to yourself, to your immediate surroundings. It's a gift to humanity. It's a gift to the earth. And it's a gift far beyond the earth. Think about how many galactic points we have in this chart. It's a gift to the whole Milky Way galaxy and far beyond. So thank you for being a way shower. And if you're ready, when you're ready to connect with me more fully, taylornorrisreiki.com. I'm so excited and grateful to connect with you more and more soul to soul, spirit to spirit, guiding you home to heaven on earth within through Reiki and astrology. And I hope to see you at the Reiki share coming up for this beautiful new moon. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.